my name is Lyra Flores, first counsel for the applicant, and to impart the first submission. Presented before this honorable court is a petition for certiorari, assailing the constitutionality of the 2006 Anti-Terrorism Act. It is imperative that the people of this country, for the constitutional bearers of sovereignty, take a stand. In this, applicant argues on four key points assailing the constitutionality of the Act. Our first two arguments deal with the definition of terrorism and its prescription of membership terrorist organizations, while the last two arguments deal with certain provisions of the Act, which certain provisions of the Act, which which are valid in invalid use of police power. As first agent, I shall submit that first, the definition of terrorism is vague and unconstitutional, violating substantive due process and right to fair notice. And that second, the provisions on membership and prescription of terrorist organizations likewise violate the freedom of association, the principle of presumption of innocence, and the prohibition on the bill of attainder, which is embodied in the Constitution and the law. If there are no preliminary observations, Your Honors, I shall now proceed. Thank you. Second is the doctrine that the power of Congress to enact laws is tempered by both substantive and procedural limits. These substantive limits are that can you remind this court why you have no understanding the question of that? Your Honors, we have no understanding because we are, this is an issue of transcendental importance. Why is it an issue of transcendental importance? Because the issue of terrorism and this act would violate individual human rights and thus we have no understanding as provided for by previous, by previous trials already and now we are here for certiorari assailing the question of law. Agent, if there is transcendental importance, do you need a substantial or direct interest or injury before you can file a case before this court? I'm sorry, Your Honor, let me, um. If you are arguing that there is transcendental importance, right? Yes. Is substantial injury, substantial or direct injury essential before you can file a case before this court? No, Your Honor. What's your reason? Our, our reason for this is, actually, Your Honors, um, the facts of the case have already been, have already been decided on prior to this, so now we're really just arguing upon their questions of law. Yes, what is, what is your, is there, so you're arguing that there is no direct injury, but there is transcendental importance? Yes, Your Honor, that, that is what we're saying. Proceed. May I proceed? Thank you. This, again, uh, Your Honors, the substantive limits on legislative power are chiefly found in the Bill of Rights. To ensure that the government does not become tyrannical, the Bill of Rights limits its actions and is a guarantee that it shall respect individual human rights and welfare. Although there must be a clear and unequivocal breach of the Constitution, in order for a law to warrant a violation of these substantive limits of legislative power, the quantum of evidence required to reverse the constitutionality of statutes in cases involving civil liberties is not as important, especially when there is a clear threat to the Constitution. Here's a technical direct to the point. Why is the um, Anti-Terrorism Act vague? Um, Your Honor, the Anti-Terrorism is vague and overbroad because it violates the substantive due process and fair notice of the clauses of the Constitution, which is embodied, Your Honor, in Section 1, Article 3 of the Bill of Rights. Your Honor, may I proceed with the point to further this? The Section 1 of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution enshrines the importance of due process as procedural fairness and as substantive guarantee. Substantive due process, Your Honors, is the prohibition on arbitrary laws and the protection of life, liberty, and property of an individual. This court, it's no less than this court, explains in People v. Nazario that as a rule, a statute or an act may be said to be vague when it lacks comprehensible standards, that men of common intelligence must necessarily guess as its meaning and differ in its application. This violates due process, for number one, for failure to accord persons fair notice of the conduct to avoid, and number two, it leaves <coughs> law enforcers unbridled discretion when carrying out. So, is or how is terrorism defined in this act? Your Honors, terrorism is defined in this act under Section 3 as 
any person who, acting in any of the manners described in paragraphs 1, 2, and 3 of Article 17 of the Revised Penal Code, threatens to use assassination, uses for having the ability to do so, assassination, kidnapping, hijacking of land, sea, and air transportation, bombing, biological or chemical agent, nuclear device, paralyzation of the water supply, electric power, and any other strategic and vital infrastructure of the nation, either to advance, propagate, or promote, or promote religious or political beliefs, or to sow or create a condition of extraordinary fear, anxiety, and panic among the populace, in order to coerce the government to give in to a demand, shall be guilty of the crime of terrorism, Your Honor. So why is that vague? Your Honor, it is, um, if I may proceed to my points, and I shall now discuss why it is vague. From the wordings of Section 3, which I have just discussed, the acts that constitute terrorism are also the same acts, for example, assassination, kidnapping, etc., which are punishable under the revised penal code and other special laws. I need it now. Oh, yes, sir. So what other, what are similar crimes that you would say also be punishable under, under the revised penal code? For example, Your Honor, assassination would be, um, would be punished under Article 248 of the revised penal code. Yes, agent, yes. but the intent for assassination or murder, or rather murder, yes. would be intent to kill. Here in terrorism, it's in the intent is to sow fear. So there's a different intent. So how would you say that there is a crime? Oh, uh, actually, Your Honor, that, that's a great point, and I'm about to further it and answer your question, if I may. Okay, so act in criminal law, it means any bodily movement tending to produce some effect in the external world. What then differentiates these acts as constituting terrorism from those already punishable under the revised penal code and other Philippine laws? It is vague and unclear. Although the definition makes a reference to the advancement, propagation, and promotion of a religious or political belief as motive for committing such acts. Okay, okay, you don't have to repeat the word So just clarify for me. Yes. Conversation with you. Okay. Okay. How do you differentiate? Or what is the similarity between murder and? For example, Your Honor, let's say, let's use assassination as an example. Assassination would be already, as I said earlier, punishment of the revised penal code. Under this act, Your Honor, it would be qualified as terrorism with two, with two reasons. The first is the motive of if you commit, let's say your intent was to kill someone and you assassinate them. But then here, it would constitute terrorism if your motive to kill that person would be to advance, propagate, or promote religious or political beliefs. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And, sorry, yes, Your Honor. Very clear. I don't understand why you say it's vague. Um, Your Honor, because as a basic tenet of criminal law, motive is not an essential crime. Uh, no, there's a difference between motive and intent. Yes. Okay. So here, Your Honor, says that the intent for murder or homicide is just intent to kill. And the terrorism is intent to propagate fear. And then as a consequence, to carry out the provisions. There